I'd like to welcome this month's passenger profile, Miss Juliet Lyons. I forgot my little plug <laughs> thing. Hi, Juliet. Hi. And, and normally, <laughs> I want to say right up front, normally we interview people who are current taxi members, but uh, Juliet doesn't need taxi anymore. So let's start out by talking about that for a minute. You've graduated. <laughs> Why don't you need taxi anymore? I thought, first of all, I wouldn't necessarily say I've graduated because there's always new opportunities through taxi that right now I am not taking advantage of by not being a member. But I have been staying so busy with um, the libraries that I'm working with. I'm getting enough direct um, pitches or briefs or album work with the music libraries that I'm working with that I just don't have time to, to write right. for taxi listings. It happens, uh, you know, it's something the minute I had the idea for the concept of taxi many years ago, walked into the kitchen and said to my wife, I've got a great idea. And I told her the idea. And she said, it's a bad business model. And I said, why? And she said, because every time you help somebody become successful, they won't need what you do anymore. And I said, that's OK. And so there you go. You're a, a living example of that. <laughs> well, yeah, but, um, you know, just also, I think another thing to consider with taxi is just that okay you maybe maybe you do get so busy but there's always the rally <laughs> which i try to come to every year <laughs> anyway you know like there's always benefits the feedback on on the submissions and that kind of stuff so yeah well we'll get into some of that in a bit but first let me get a little background from you uh where did you grow up i grew up in albuquerque new mexico for the most part yep and were you like a musical kid? Did you have musicians in the family? Did you grow up singing into hairbrushes? Where, where did it all start? <laughs> yeah, it was definitely the hairbrush. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, my parents aren't musicians, but they uh, are music lovers and they can both sing on tune. I think that's helpful right there. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, my, it's my sister was taking guitar lessons and to this day, I, I still like to do pretty much everything my big sister likes to do. <laughs> so she's doing it. I want to try it. So I, I started taking guitar lessons as a little kid. And my teacher was just giving me these basic, you know, like children's songs to just strum and sing along to. And I remember like at some point there was kind of a check in with my parents, um, with the teacher. And the teacher was like, well, my sister is doing a great job with the guitar. And then then he was saying for me, like, she's doing a great job with the singing. <laughs> so he kind of, yeah, he's like, the guitar, not so much, but she's got some singing potential. And, you know, I was always singing around the house and stuff like that. So that's, that was what I loved from the beginning. And that's what I stuck with. <laughs> um, how old were you when you first thought of writing a song, doing your own thing? Well, I mean, technically it was in eighth grade. We had to do a project, just a presentation, but I think they were encouraging us to do like creative ways of presenting. So I wrote a song for that <laughs> presentation and it was just silly, um, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, I, I didn't actually get I, like, that, okay, that's, that's the technical answer. I first wrote a song in eighth grade, but I didn't go on to actually like think about writing music as something other than a school project yeah. um, until until my young twenties. And Wait. did you always have the dream or the goal, the aspiration to be a musician, be a, a writer, be a vocalist, be all that? Was that always your focus? This is what I'm going to do for my career always 100 percent. i mean i started in musical theater and that was my first direction I, I wanted to be on broadway that was like my my first dream was to do musical theater professionally and like through the years it's evolved into different things in college i like switched it out to i want to be an opera singer and then uh, after that went back to musical theater and then um then when i started writing songs 
this is it, this is it, this is what I want to do. And then I discovered writing for Sync, and that's my home. <laughs> How did you I, I discover do writing for Sync? I mean, that usually isn't something that just kind of falls into the lap of every musician. How, how did that come about? Yeah. It came about through a taxi list, a, a taxi ad and music connection. Wow. Like that's literally how it happened for me. I didn't know that there was a route. I didn't even like, I just thought, oh, you know, they hire people on the shows to do these things. And so I didn't know there was production music. And I saw, I saw a taxi ad and I'm like, hmm, let's check it out. I joined taxi and then, then the briefs started coming in. Initially, I was you know thinking about like sending like I, I sent my my very first songs I sent in for like country like I've, I've actually talked to a few other people who, who did this too like it was such a rude awakening right. like, I mean for me I was like I, I'm gonna write a country song they're all about beer and Right, pick up and trucks and you know, trucks. girls wearing yeah. Daisy Dukes to the swimming hole. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I remember the first the first couple of listings I I, I <laughs> submitted for some country stuff, and I'm like, I'm gonna make a lot of money as a country writer. And then the the feedback, the comments, let's just say they did not get forwarded. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was it was like kind of like, oh, I guess there's actually quite a bit of craft in these. I learned through the years, country is like super competitive and super craft, like lyrically, very, very carefully crafted and stuff. So anyway, all the briefs coming in from Taxi is like, okay. Um, a lot of them through the years, more and more became like film and TV. And mm -hmm. so I started submitting more and more for that with me as the artist rather than just being a writer. And um, yeah that seemed to work better. <laughs> it's funny because somebody once said to me, the least plausible job in the music industry is being an opera singer because there are really only three or four that count. Um, you know, being a rock band on a major label and having success is incredibly hard. Being an opera singer, even harder. And so you pick the two hardest paths. I'm going to be an opera singer or a country writer. And you and Matt, yeah. Barrett, though, he learned the same lesson. And, and it's funny, I've watched you and Matt have there's a group of you that have kind of grown up together through taxi. Um, mm -hmm. We have generations of members. And, and I yeah. think that's part of maybe the taxi experience is the older generation being, um, we've figured it out now, uh, and we're going to pass this information along to you, the newer members. And, and I, I, I had nothing to do with that. All I did was build the barn and open the door. But you guys who walked into that barn have always been so generous there's no sense of like i'm not telling these guys anything because they could be my competitors someday instead it's like i think you guys meaning the generous members see it as um i kind of owe this to the world because i've been very fortunate number one and number two maybe i'll meet some new collaborators whatever there, there's something very synergistic about it and you vanderbo chuck henry um matt hurt you all kind of grew up together. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it is cute. It is cute. Um, yeah, Matt Hurt, you know, like he it started so much with Matt Hurt. And like I remember watching his videos that he, he did with you, interviews that he did with you like before I, I met him. And I remember the year that I met him at a rally and like I recognized him like, oh my gosh, that's that guy. And um, I was feeling like kind of shy about talking to him, but I introduced myself and like, he's like, so what kind of music do you do? Like, I wasn't expecting him to be interested in me, you know, like I, I was interested in him and, and his story and his success and all that. And he like, just the fact that he was like wanting to know so what's your story, you know, like it, it was like, I feel like Taxi somehow attracts these people who really believe in paying it forward and um, just just nice people, genuinely nice people. And um, so, yeah, it's it's been really fun to see people succeed and um, and pass it and pass it forward to more people. And I can say too, like truly, truly, truly that 
so many of the people that I've met through Taxi, collaborated with through Taxi, you know, meeting these people at the at the rally year after year, like they have changed my life. So yeah. it's it's really a special community. <laughs> um, is the rally the main way you meet your collaborators, or have you met them? I don't know, through the forum, through your website, you know, what are some of the channels where you've met collaborators? And I want to talk more about collaborators in a moment, but I'm curious sure. how you meet them. Yes. Um, it, I, I joined the taxi forum first years, 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 years ago. I, I'm not so active there anymore, but um, I started with the forum and I was living abroad at the time and didn't have access to many other people I could co-write with. And so it was like this perfect situation where I didn't have to be in LA, I didn't have to be anywhere in particular to be able to write with people. And we just went to send files back and forth, um, that kind of thing. And so that was, that was one way. And then definitely at the rally year after year. And even just like, even though I have like some really established relationships, people that I write with over and over and over again, albums of material um, every year, you know, I meet new people and um, it's always fun to, to try some different matches and see, see how it works. Um, is it uncomfortable, <coughs> excuse me, when you meet somebody and they approach you because, you know, you're kind of a, a very visible taxi member, especially at the rally, because you've got this wide circle of friends. And so people, of course, would like, hey, Juliet, can you know, you want to collaborate? How do you know who to say yes to, who to try it with? And what if it doesn't work out and you've got to say, you know, not a good fit? Is that uncomfortable? And how do you break up with somebody? <laughs> I know it is a little bit it is a little you can see how there's like uh, a metaphor of like dating you know like right. trying people out see how Swipe it works. right <laughs> yeah yeah breaking up whatever but um i feel like when you meet someone face to face like it, it's different like on the forum you can actually like click click their website what does their music sound like you know like yeah. um but when you meet someone face to face you can't be like hold on let me hear your music let me see if it's a high caliber production or whatever. Um, but that's when an energy is really valuable, like just sensing someone's energy, like uh, how the conversation goes. Do you feel comfortable with them? Like um, for me, it really is, do I like the person? <laughs> if yeah. I like the person, that goes such a long way. <laughs> um, even if like, I'm not sure if, how the music's going to go or how the collaboration's going to go. I just like the person. Yes, let's give it a try. What kind of music did you listen to in your formative years, probably like high school into your 20s, before you really got active in creating music? What were your what were your faves and what were your influences? I think I think this is kind of a testament to what I'm doing now, which is a little of everything. Um, I did. I listened to a little of everything. Like I was very much the musical theater world, so world says listening to musicals. Uh, then I got into opera, listened to opera. But in the pop world, everything. I mean, my favorite always since high school has been Bob Marley. I love really? Bob Marley. Yes. Oh, I actually that. got to work with him for three days when I worked at Criteria Miami. We'll have to talk about that off camera someday. I want to hear all about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I feel like the messages in those songs are simple and profound. Like, it's just timeless. They're still relevant today, more than ever, you know? And then the beats, you know, it just feels good. I love to listen to, reg to reggae. And then uh, I was listening to The Cure, Depeche Mode, like alt music, and then like super pop, like, gosh, who, who was around back then? I mean, the, the 90s, like rock bands, like Pearl Jam and stuff like that. So... Mm -hmm. And then it, like there's a lot of hip hop in my school too, so I was listening to a lot. Interesting. I you know I mean it's not like we're besties, and I know you all that well, but know you fairly well. You know throughout the years and watched your you know I've heard a lot of your music and watched your career arc. I never would have guessed that um, that you listened to hip hop back then. You 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 know you you seem more like an Adele lover, but that's because she's a great <laughs> vocalist and you're a great vocalist, but. <laughs> 
Um, when you start a collaboration with somebody, is it usually that they are really good at producing tracks and, and they need a top line or what capacity do you usually collaborate? I guess is the better question. Mm -hmm. I, I have done a lot of instrumentals through the years and on those, I usually do it on my own. I, I'm limited in the genres that I do on the instrumental side, um, but I usually don't collaborate on those because I can do them by myself. But on the song side, that's why, I, that's why I put them in the other room because I knew at some point they would bark. <laughs> but hopefully that'll pass soon. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah, but on the, on the vocal side, I know that the bar is so high and I don't do, I don't really produce the genres that I sing in hmm. with the exception of like new age. So um, I really, that's when I absolutely want to collaborate with someone who can, who can just rock that production. Um, is it, I'm sure it's a challenge, but is it ever like an, oh my God level challenge when you hear, you know, somebody, you've got a relationship, you're comfortable collaborating and they send you something and you think, wow, uh, never imagined I'd be singing on something like this. Um, how do you get yourself in the headspace? Uh, do you like research how other vocalists treat their approach to the vocals in that particular genre? Or do you just go for it and whatever comes out is what you try and develop further? How does it work? I mean, it's so exciting when I get those tracks from people, because like you said, like, Sometimes it'll be like, what, I, how do I, how do I get, how do I tap into this sound, you know? Um, it, it's, it's just so cool. And especially when I send them like the scratch demo first, but just so basic. And then they turn around into something so cool. And that's like Christmas for me, like hearing, hearing like, what, how did you turn it into that? And that's what I'm like encouraged to like, hey, the song's pretty good. Because sometimes when I record my own scratch demos, I'm like, we'll see. And then, when when it becomes produced it's like okay no the song is solid it just needed good production <laughs> wow so um yeah but absolutely i i i study i am a studier like that's probably a strength of mine is that i enjoy studying and so especially vocals uh whatever it is i mean if it's a taxi listing or whatever and you you say reference reference artists include so and so if i'm not already familiar with them i with them, I'll listen and observe um, the characteristics, the nuances, the stylistic tricks that they're using. And I always use like my voice, like it has to still be me singing it, right. but I'll try to like tap into the character, the feeling, and then some of these vocal techniques to make it fit, to make it sink into that sound better. About an hour ago, I was talking to one of the guys in the A&R department here at Taxi, and I was telling him the last few nights, I've been absolutely binging Lady Gaga. Uh, <sighs> my wife is out of town, so I get into bed, and it's me and my laptop, and uh, I've been literally Lady holding Gaga. my laptop up to like where, where the bottom of the laptop is touching my chin so that I get the full stereo effect. <laughs> And I've got to say, uh, first of all, I just love the production on all of her records. Uh, it is spectacularly good. The arrangements lend themselves so so well to production. Um, but her vocals, I, I first became aware of how great she was as a vocalist. I think of the Monster Ball video thing on HBO years ago where it showed her warming up in the dressing room with her background singers. It's like, mm. wow, she is like, legitimately one of the great vocalists out there working right now and, and so yeah. such a great example of somebody who i think always keeps in mind who she is as an artist what her brand is um, which sounds mm -hmm. weird to even say that a singer should think about their brand but yeah you got to kind of be one thing in a lane so that people come back for more of you and not like yeah. all over the place when you're out there as a record artist um do you find it difficult to not sound like other people? I, when I was still working in the studio, uh, I developed engineering and production shops because I listened to other people's work. And I would often have to stop myself going, that sounds too much like something Trevor Horn would do or somebody would do. Do you ever run into that as a vocalist where you sound too 
imitative or derivative and, and you're losing a little bit of you or is it just come out that way easily? I think I self-regulate when I'm recording and like, I'll go back and listen to a take and be like, mm, that doesn't sound like me. That that sounds like I'm imitating or something like that. So I just try to be mindful. Most of the time it doesn't happen just because I cannot sound like Lady Gaga, for example. She just has a different tone, a different timbre. She has like a, a bigger voice than me. So I, I even if I tried, I wouldn't sound like her, but um, yeah, most of the time it's not an issue, but every now and then I'll hear something that I'm like, that doesn't sound authentic to me and my voice. So let's let's try that one again. But Lady Gaga is such a great example. I, I love that you brought her up because yes, she has such an artistic identity and a persona. You can always recognize that it's her voice, but she, she's done all kinds of stuff. Like she, she did musical, like a musical medley at the Oscars a few years ago or something. And, and the work she did with Tony Bennett. Some of her best work yes. in that Tony Bennett collab. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, she she's she can do anything. And it's the same thing. She's tapping into the, the genre, the style. She's adapting in that way, but it's always Lady Gaga's voice. That's yeah. what I go for. <laughs> That's what I strive for. Same thing. Um, let's talk about your sync life specifically. Um, Tell us about some of your placements and then I'll go down the road further on that topic. Some placements that were like really big ones, really meaningful to you or like, wow, can't believe I got that. All that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, there's been some fun ones and hands down my favorite placement, which I didn't write, but I was the vocalist on. I got through Taxi and you might remember this one that was um, with um, Nick Murray. Right. And I got to sing, I got to sing on a trailer piece that he, uh, he found Cinderella, me through Cinderella, right? Yes. And it worked its way into Cinderella. It was a Cinderella trailer. So that was so, so cool because, you know, like Disney, like that's pretty awesome. And then just being in the movie theater, hearing it, wow. like <laughs> that was, that was cool. Like, Did you, whoever you went like to the I, movie with have to tie you to the chair so you wouldn't jump up and start like screaming? <laughs> No, because I, you know, I, I, I'm self-conscious sometimes, but, you know, like, but I, I, I knew it, I knew it was me, you know, I'm like, wow. this is so cool. So yeah, that, that one was really amazing. Uh, another one that I got through Taxi that was awesome was, um, it's a, it's a holiday film called Christmas in the City, and it's played on Lifetime for 10 years now, every year they replay that film. And it's like the song is in the final scene going into the credits and a, a nice chunk of time. It's like the vocal is pretty featured. Um, it's like the happy ending part. So it's yeah. like a, a great spot. And yeah, like we had no idea that it was going to be playing every year. Every year we're, we're still collecting royalties for that. So that's an awesome one. And then another really fun one was a cover I did of White Wedding by Billy Idol. It was on a show called Pretty Little Liars. And that would be the last still, song I would ever expect you to cover somehow. <laughs> yeah, and, and I should be sure to to shout out to Billy Idol too, like when you're talking about my favorite artists growing up. I wow. love Billy Idol. <laughs> so I'm a big fan of his, and I've done a few covers of his songs, but the White Wedding one got on Pretty Little Liars, and that's still my most streamed um, song on Spotify years 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 later so you just never know how they're gonna take off 